Huntington's disease is a terrible degenerative disorder that robs you of your memories, your movement and eventually your life. And in this video I want to look at the science of this inherited condition. Let's find out more. Located on the short P arm of chromosome 4 is the HTT gene. This gene codes for a protein called Huntington. So what is the role of this protein? Well, it isn't fully understood exactly what this protein does, but it looks like it's got a number of different functions within cells. So let's have a look at those. Firstly, Huntington is involved with cell transport. Our cells are constantly moving materials from one part of the cell to another. And in order to do this, they use roads made of protein, some of which are made from a protein called tubulin. The trucks that are used to move packages along these roads delivering chemicals from one place to another are made again from a variety of different proteins, including one called dynein. It's been shown that Huntington interacts with both tubulin and dynein, and so has therefore got some sort of role in cell transport. Secondly, don't forget that the DNA in our cells is a set of instructions telling the cell how to make proteins, and I covered this in my DNA video, which I'll put a link to up here. The instructions for one protein is called a gene. Helping to make new proteins seems to be the second role of Huntington. In order to make a new protein, the cell uses the DNA to make a different molecule called RNA. Your cells, though, need to know when to make RNA to make these proteins. And so to do this, they use even more proteins called transcription factors. One important protein in certain cells is called brain-derived neuronal factor, or BDNF. This protein is particularly important in brain cells and other nerve cells, and these cells need this protein in order to survive and grow. Just next to the BDNF gene on the chromosome is a region of DNA called a regulatory region. This specific region is called repressor element 1 slash neuronal restrictive silencing element. Yes, sometimes in biology things have got very long names. There's another protein with another very long name called repressor element 1 slash neuronal restrictive silencing transcription factor. Now, if this protein binds to that regulatory region just before the gene, it stops the cell from using the gene to make the BDNF protein. And don't forget that brain cells need this BDNF protein to grow and survive. The binding of this protein would therefore not be good for the growth of brain cells. Huntington has been shown to bind to this protein, stopping it then from binding to the regulatory region. This means then that Huntington promotes the production of BDNF, helping brain cells to survive and grow. And we're not finished there. Cells undergo a process called apoptosis or programmed cell death, and this obviously kills the cell. And in order for this to happen, a group of enzymes called caspases are needed. Huntington has been shown to stop the activity of these caspase enzymes, and in doing so, helps the cell to stay alive longer and not die. So this is what the Huntington protein normally does. So what happens when a person has Huntington's disease? Well, the gene for the normal Huntington protein has a region near to the beginning which consists of the same three bases repeated multiple times. And these bases are C, A and G. And this codes for the amino acid glutamine. Seriously, if you haven't watched my DNA video, go and watch it now. This will make a lot more sense. And normally, this gene contains between 10 and 35 repeats of this sequence, which then means that the final Huntington protein contains between 10 and 35 glutamine molecules near the beginning of the chain. In someone with Huntington's disease, they have extra repeats of that base sequence, usually over 40, but it can be as high as 180. And this means that the Huntington protein 
has got an abnormal shape and so won't be able to do all of those important things that I've already spoken about. But unfortunately, it's even more serious than that. Firstly, these Huntington proteins, which have been made with the extra glutamine molecules, fold incorrectly, and so they haven't got the right shape. Our cells have got a mechanism for dealing with wrongly shaped proteins, and this is called the ubiquitin proteasome system, or UPS. And I'll make a separate video about this because it's fascinating. And this system destroys these wrongly shaped proteins, firstly by breaking them into fragments. Unfortunately, glutamine's got an electrical charge on it, and so when the proteins are chopped into fragments, these protein pieces stick together, forming structures called protein aggregates. And these protein aggregates can get into the nucleus of the cell and disrupt its ability to function. Also, when the abnormal gene is transcribed to make the molecule of RNA, the exons are spliced incorrectly, leading to unusually short RNA fragments that, when used in protein synthesis, produce more of these small protein fragments, which can also clump together to form these protein aggregates. The altered Huntington protein is also able to capture and disrupt the activity of other proteins. One such protein is the CREB binding protein, or CBP. This small protein normally sits in the nucleus of the cell and switches on genes that are needed for the cell's survival pathway, and this ensures that the cell remains alive. The altered Huntington protein captures the CBP and takes it away from its normal location, preventing it from doing its job of keeping the cell alive. Also, our cells produce proteins all the time, and as I've already talked about in my DNA video, the long chain of those amino acids then folds itself into a complex three-dimensional shape, and this means that the protein is then able to carry out its function. Sometimes, however, this folding goes wrong, and the wrong shape is produced, and I've already mentioned this. And I've already mentioned that our cells have got this really neat system for dealing with it called a ubiquitin proteasome system. Abnormal Huntington proteins are not destroyed by this system, and it appears that the Huntington proteins are marked for destruction, but the proteasomes that actually do the destroying are interfered with by the Huntington proteins, meaning that they're not properly destroyed. In kind of a vicious circle, the abnormal Huntington proteins are damaging the very system that's supposed to destroy them tidying up the cell of these dangerous proteins. This then leads to a very gradual build-up of these Huntington proteins and aggregates, and this may be the reason why Huntington's disease first shows its signs only usually later in life. And in fact, this is one of the areas of current research. If a way could be found to enhance the abilities of the UPS to destroy these aberrant proteins, maybe an effective treatment for Huntington's could be found. I wanted in this video to look at the biomolecular science of this condition, but I put some links to Huntington support organisations in the description below. And for now, and until next time, thank you for watching.